need a break. Give us a couple of minutes, eh? <laughs> Evening, Mike. Yeah, mate. Listen, do us a favour, will you? I've got this beautiful bird in the car. She's absolutely insatiable. Take over for a few minutes, eh? Me? <laughs> I she on No, no, she won't notice the difference in the dark. <laughs> Hold a dog. Right. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's going on here then? Good heavens. Harry. I didn't realise it was your wife. <laughs> Neither did I, because you shone your torch. Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to Glasgow. If you are tired of trekking around the travel agents in search of a good holiday, then this is the last resort. <laughs> Glasgow is a cosmopolitan city, but you will always spot the native Glaswegian. He's the one with the shamrock and his turban. <laughs> and don't be alarmed if you see a Glaswegian man lying in a gutter. He won't be ill. He'll have found a parking space and sent a wife home for a car. <laughs> Some cynical people have asked in the past, is it safe to walk about in Glasgow at night? Well, of course it is. It would be foolish to deny that there are not certain dubious areas where a policeman walk about in twos. <laughs> and that's inside the police station. <laughs> Your next question might be, how will I cope with the language? Well, any visitor would find it invaluable to invest in this simple little phrase book. In no time at all, this indispensable guide enables one to converse freely with the natives. For instance, let us take an instance. If one was seated in a cafe and was desirous for a cup of coffee, simply refer to the index. Coffee, coffee, see, bevy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> bevy, yes. Gone, geese a coffee. <laughs> And one mustn't forget that each request should be preceded with the beckoning call, Hey Jimmy. <laughs> the order would now be, Hey Jimmy, go and a coffee. <laughs> you may now ask, what entertainment is available to me during my stay? Well, the city is not without its culture. It boasts theatres where you can see a variety of entertainment ranging from illegitimate plays to musicals. <laughs> also, a 1,500-seater concert hall plays host to many famous names from the classical and orchestral world. Glaswegians have always appreciated classical music. A certain well-known concert pianist once performed Rachmaninoff's prelude in G-sharp minor. And by Jove, the fellow was good. In fact, I'm told couples actually stop dancing and applauding. <laughs> you will probably ask, where can I eat out in Glasgow? Well, you have an extensive choice. You can pick from three steakhouses, 65 Indian restaurants, 52 Italian bistros, 10 Greek diners, 4 Turkish kebab shops, 2 Chinese takeaways, and an Irish bring it back. <laughs> sample uh, some of our own fine Scottish fare, such as the haggis. <laughs> it has not been unknown for foreigners to these shores to inquire what a haggis is. <laughs> well, it is uh, round in shape, rather like a football, and you eat it. And once you've eaten it, you, you wish you'd kicked it. <laughs> On 
and Saturday you can be a participant at a typical Glasgow football match or you could take the family to the zoo, so you have a choice. You can study the animals at play in their natural habitat or, as I said, you could visit the zoo. <laughs> well, I hope this year you will holiday in Glasgow where we can assure you of our warm hostility. Cheerio and <laughs> Tomorrow, Sunday stir, the sexy secrets of the Wimbledon girls. The score is love all and they all score at love. It was a battle of wills. I was an unseeded amateur and Betsy Mae Brown was queen of the centre court. When I realised that Mrs Brown was going to beat me, I had no choice. I, I locked my bedroom door. Plus, the search is on for Britain's grottiest granny. If you are the lousiest, proudiest granny in the land, Sunday stir is offering you the chance to win a Mediterranean cruise. And for Granny, a free burial at sea. And crazy things Barbara Woodhouse had to do to train her pet box. Sit! And Big Bill Banker, soccer's man of the moment, speaks out about transfer fees. Would you pay half a million for this player? Yes, please. Will he take a chance? All in tomorrow's explosive Sunday to Start the day with a man. The dream factory, with its constant sunshine, this leafy London suburb, was a natural choice for the pioneer movie makers. Studios sprang up and famous players were imported from Broadway. Cricklewood Broadway, just down the road. <laughs> Today, the studios are shuttered and silent, but Cricklewood remains a synonym for glamour and movie magic. One man who remembers the golden age is Wally Fisher, a studio carpenter. If any man can capture the essence of British filmmaking with wit and insight, that man is not Wally Fisher. <laughs> you are remembered him as clear as if it was yesterday. Of course, I, I was only on the perimeter like being a studio chippy, but I got to know all the big stars and they was always ready to listen to my advice. I remember one day I spotted a little figure in baggy pants walking along twirling a cane. One look and I thought to myself, hello, here's comic genius writ large. We got chatting and I said, take my tip. Shave off that moustache and you'll go a long, long way. <laughs> and I was right. From that day on, Googie Withers never looked back. <laughs> We turned out some very successful talkies at Cricklewood, feature films that grow thousands of pounds. But nothing was more gross than our weekly newsreel. Audiences always looked forward to it. At the very sight of our cock, they'd sit up and take notes. <laughs> The GPO has done it again. We won't blind you with signs and show you how the latest marvel works. Instead, let's see it in action. Here in a public telephone box in Kilburn, frantic fingers dial an emergency call. Just look at all those wires and cables. Try knitting a cardigan with that lot, Grandma. It's just part of the ingenious apparatus that makes our telephone system second to none. Emergency, which service, please? Oh, uh, could I have the fire brigade, an ambulance and the police, please? The emergency services have been alerted and within minutes, help is on its way. What the devil's going on? Why did you phone the police? the ambulance and the fire brigade? I was lonely. <laughs> 
From Braemar to Bangkok, everybody's favourite Scotsman, Sir Harry Lauder, has had them rolling in the aisles. It was cheers all the way until Sir Harry arrived in Baghdad. This may be the home of the magic carpet, but nobody rolled out the red carpet. Why? Well, it seems they've got a book of rules over there called the Koran. And one of the rules is no bare knees, if you please. One glimpse of naked kneecap can shock the sheiks and scare them in the harem. A tricky situation for the man in the kilt. How to avoid insulting a sultan. Leave it to Sir Harry to come up with an answer. And what an answer it proved to be. Keep right on to the end of the road. Keep right on to the end. Though the way be long, let your heart be strong. Keep right on around the bend. Though you're tired and weary, still journey on. You can prove your happy still rules the waves, another ocean giant is about to be launched at Clydeside. For months the shipyard has echoed to the din of hammers and drills, but today it's the cheering crowd that is making all the noise. Britain is great and by George she'll stay great, so long as men toil to build beauties like this one. <laughs> it's only right that royalty should be present to give this grand lady to see a fitting centre. <laughs> I'm happy to name the ship the Queen Mary. Middle 30s, the industry was down in the dumps. Now, that's when Cricklewood decided to bring in some big international talent. When I heard Marlene Dietrich was coming, I wasn't too pleased, because I'd had a belly full of the crouts in the 1940s. <laughs> we got on like a house on fire. Underneath her famous legs, Marlene was a very nice little woman, always ready with a smile and a quip. A proper tonic, she was. A sort of chew tonic. <laughs> Mind you, the film she made for us didn't do her career much good. The trouble was she took over a part that had been specially written for Gracie Fields. Gracie was doing a variety tour, so Marlena stepped into the breach, so to speak. The picture was set in the north of England, and Marlena played Sally Hartwright, a Rochdale girl who worked in a flour mill. <laughs> yeah, they, they should have waited for Gracie. <laughs> Sally Arkwright summits up with thee this morning. Yes, you, you great fat lump. <laughs> Come on, love, a penny for your thoughts. A penny wouldn't buy the secrets of my soul. <laughs> now, don't worry about me, mother. I'm strong. Nothing can touch me. It took more than one man to change my name to Rochdale Sally. <laughs> hey, you're not falling in love again. I never wanted to. What am I to do? I can't help it. Of course you can help it. Self-control's what you need, young lady. Last night with a proper disgrace, our back room with you and lads from Flamel laughing and carrying on. No wonder the neighbours were peering through their curtains. They wanted to see what the boys in the back room had got. <laughs> oh, we sang, we joked, we drank a little schnapps. <laughs> then we tangled to Handel's Messiah. <laughs> oh, it was thrilling, Mother. Truly thrilling. Give over. How can you dance to Handel's Messiah? I said it was thrilling. I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> Look at time, our Sally. Why aren't you getting ready for work? Work? The flour mill closed down last night. Even the packing room is empty. I asked Mr. Pontefract, where has all the flour gone? <laughs> And how do we manage for brass with you and Dole? Hey, you're not thinking of running off to London, are you? 
and leave my beloved Archdale? When your Lancashire born and bred, London has no magic, no allure. <laughs> There are legions of lost women in London who are preyed on by rich men who offer them money, jewels, and furs. That's London. <laughs> well, be a good girl, Sally, and drop us a postcard the moment you get to Houston. <laughs> no, I shall never leave. We will drum of support all over Rochdale, starting at the gates of the factory, a march through the old streets and lanes, underneath the lamplight, across the Park Square. By the time a vast crowd gets back to those gates, they will have to reopen. The sound of cheering. It's all over. Our jobs are safe. Not yours, love. Grace is just back from a musical tour. <laughs> Can I help you? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, um, I, I'd rather see the chemist. I am the chemist. What can I do for you? No, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Young man, me and my sister have been running this chemist shop for 30 years and there's nothing that you can ask for that is going to embarrass us. Oh, well, it's rather difficult to explain. I, I've got this terrible desire to make love. Nine and ten times a day, it's like I'm on fire. I wondered if you could give me something for it. Just a moment, I'll have a word with my sister. <laughs> what are you going to give me? Ten thousand a year and a share of the business. And now, this week's Hollywood musical about two American teenage kids living in London. Babes in Balham. <laughs> Dear Mr. Jingle, I thought I'd drop a line To thank you for the promises you made When you said you'd bring back hanging And I love the way you call a spade a spade So, Mr. Dingle, you're gonna get my vote Cause your policy for Britain is ideal Since I came out of the closet You can forfeit your deposit but you never forfeit all the love I feel Cause you made me love you I didn't want to do it I didn't want to do it Good morning. You're Connie Smith, aren't you? That's right. I'm pleased to meet you. I'm Danny Dingle. Dudley Dingle, son. I'm your father's greatest fan. Well, I was out canvassing for my old man when I heard you singing, Miss Smith, and it gave me a swell idea. Can I come in and discuss it? Well, I, I guess so. Oh, something smells good. Your mother's Sunday joint? Yeah, she smokes one every Sunday. <laughs> How's your dad's campaign coming along? I caught his last appearance at Southall. It was truly terrific. Yeah, but it could be swan song. Especially now that his opponents have got themselves such a great act. What sort of act? Well, it's called the Public Order Act. Dad's been banned. Banned? Banned? Oh, of course. Strike up the band. Oh, it'll be a riot. So that's not a bad idea. 
we produce our own riot and put it on right here in Ballum. And I guess there's no lack of talent, huh? You bet. Mods, rockers, skinheads, the Monday Club. Oh, I can see it all. A great riot with a million laughs, bright lights, beautiful girls, gorgeous costumes, offensive weapons. And color. Lots and lots of color. Please, Connie, no colors. We see our names up there in electric lights. Oh, gee, I'm a gog. Oh, Connie, we'll make a swell team. You a gog and me a demagog. We'll show them all what we can do. I mean, not only the racial minorities, but everybody that we don't like. Lefty squatters, women's lib, gay weight watchers, the CMD, the RSPCA, Rastafarians, vegetarians. You name it, we hate it. Now, but how do we get round this ban on marches? My dad's a magistrate. Don't worry, I can handle Pops. <laughs> He's so dumb he wouldn't know a racialist from a laundry list. <laughs> oh, young lady, if I didn't know better, I'd say that you were softening me up for something. Well, as a matter of fact, tell him, Danny. Well, you see, sir, a bunch of us talented youngsters thought we'd try to bring back the spirit of the British Empire and put on a bit of a show. A demonstration that pits at the very heart of freedom, democracy, justice, and equality. Oh, you idealistic kids. It doesn't work. We tried it with Mosley, and still they had us fighting our friends. Friends? Mussolini and Hitler. Who were they, sir? The little and large of the 40s. <laughs> this time it'll be different, Mr. Smith. Oh, why different? We've got so many more people to hate. <laughs> And take flight. Any color skin isn't so long as it's white. Because we're brains in power now. Right the way, I'm a stupid head. I'm the nearest red. Things of all that fall out leaves us wistful. Hey, 